Laura and today I'm going to talk to you about how I choose my colors. Color is very important in a design. It gives the overall look and aesthetic. And the main thing that I like to achieve with color is balance and harmony. Balance is the colors are evenly distributed all over the design and harmony is that it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So how do I do this? So I'm currently working on my new collection rewilding and I today am working on Derek the Deer. So basically when I'm choosing colors, I think batiks are always the easiest to start with because they have so many different runs of colors through them. You can see all different colors being picked up and they have so much texture that it's very easy to get a good effect with color. So with Derek the Deer, I wanted to achieve a sort of brown textured effect, but also I wanted to bring up some blues and pink in the antlers. So basically whenever you are working with color, you have to think of what sort of effect do I want? So number one, do you want it to be predominantly brown or do you want it to be orange or whatever that you really want? So basically you start with your main color. So I want to bring up some brown notes in this design to also keep it a bit authentic. So here's my brown piece of fabric. This is just a scrap fabric that I have found in my stash. I really like it because it's got some dark browns in it and it's also got some pinks, reds. It's got a bit of this color here, which can also look yellowy. So also another thing with color is that when you pair it with a great fabric, it can really change or morph into something else. So this color here is quite, I don't know, I guess it's a bit beigey, but when you pair it with like this color here, which is a bit orangey, it really picks up these notes, these lighter notes, and that also looks quite warm. So when you pair those two together. So when you're picking your colors, you don't have to just keep picking browns. You just start with the main color that you want, and then you pick up another color on the inside. So I picked up this nice sort of orangey color here which I think goes well with this pink and this pink and red here. And so basically what you're going to do is make a color run. So I've got this one. And then if you don't know what colors you want to do, the best way to start is just start picking out colors that go. So I'm gonna pick out something that goes with this red. So I've got this little scrap one here. And then I want to move into some warmer tones. So I picked up this one. So now I'm creating a bit of a color run. So I've got this brownie color and then this red and I pulled out the red here and then I've continued on with this red and brought in a bit of the orange. And because they're all warm tones on the same side of the color wheel, they all seem to blend together and that gives you harmony. Now the next thing I want to do is bring in some cooler tones. So to do that, I'm going to need a middle filler piece. So this is the one that I've picked. It has these sort of light pinks in there and then this orangey color is in here and in here and then this pink is kind of featured in here. It's a bit abstract but I can maybe make it work. So I put it in there to start moving into my cooler tones. And so the way to tell the difference between a warm tone and a cool tone is that these are very warm and you can tell, imagine if you had some red paint and you like mixed it together with a bit of orange and stuff but this one, it looks like it could have a little bit of a bluey hue and that's when it starts to turn cool. So I imagine that that came from a different lot of paint that had been mixed together. So here's this one. Now I want to bring in some blues. So the best thing to do if you want to bring in blues is grab a fabric that has some of this pinkish cool tone and then some blues in it or aquas. So I've got this one here, which I really like. So it's getting a bit abstract, but just bear with me. <laughs> so here we go. It's bringing in this warm tone again, and then we've got the cool tones. This color's picked up here. So everything sort of all relates, and that's how I really do it. So now I'm going to pick up some more greens, and I've got this one here. So this relates to this, and then you've got this, which is in this, and then you've got this, which is in this. So it all sort of has that harmony, and that's how you can create some balance. And so when I'm making my design, I sort of just make a bit of an abstract color run. And it doesn't matter, you can pull out as many colors as you like. So we've got this one here, which relates to this. It's imagine if you had this color here and you mixed in a bit of darker black paint, you'd get this. So you can see that is a color run. And then if I feel like putting in some blues, I've got some random blues here. As you can see, that's got that green, which relates to that. And then I just want to finish it off with a solid pink. There you go. So that's how I start, I create my color run. 
Okay, so I know that was a lot to take in, but I'm just going to do some examples with the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. So with the Twilight Dreaming Quilt, before I picked any colors, I had a look on Pinterest and I thought, what sort of effect do I want? So I always start at my end goal. I never start with just anything random. It's always end goal in mind. So with the Twilight Dreaming Quilt, I wanted to do something with a black background. And I think the best thing for a black background is pairing pastel colors with it to give it a very, um, I don't know, I guess it like makes it pop out, makes it a bit dreamy. Um, it softens the harshness of the black, or maybe not harshness, I guess starkness of the black. And it also um, ties everything together. And so you don't just only use pastel colors though, you have to include some bold colors to give it a bit of a popping effect. And then there is a little secret trick that I have. Actually, I guess it's not really a secret, but there is a little bit of a trick I have. So firstly, whenever I'm looking at a block or a design, I break it up into four. So for example, this one here. So we've got four. So you've got your different quadrants. And then basically you have to make sure that the color scheme balances in all four quadrants or that if you want it to be a pop or an effect, that it's just in the top quadrant or the bottom. So with this one here, I really wanted it to be very pastel, but I also wanted a pop of effect of this blue here. So with my quadrants like this, I kept this blue in the top to make it a pop effect. And then I kept this all even around. So this color here, I wanted to really bring it in. So I made sure it was featured in all of the quadrants. So you've got it in the top and the bottom. And then these here are nice and pastel, but I brought in this green to really balance out the design. And then also with the yellow stars, I chose to do stars because it makes everything tie in together. So when people look at it, it, it gives it harmony. And so harmony just means that well, for me, it means that it's just aesthetically pleasing to look at. Like you look at it and it balances from all perspectives. And that's what you want to achieve. Well, that's what I want to achieve when I'm making a quilt. So why do I design mosaic applique? Well, it all started by accident really, but also because I wanted to focus mostly on being sustainable and using scraps and using as many of the beautiful fabrics as I could. I worked at a sewing store and we had this large range of batics available and I just loved every single one of them and I wanted to bring them in as much as I could. So the reason why I started designing mosaic is because it just felt natural to me to draw like that. And it also gave me the opportunity to make everything really rainbow and colorful, which I think is really great for um, if you're designing for kids or quilts and also it's really easy to do you don't have to worry about layering or lots of tracing all you have to do is be good at cutting and if you can hand sew or machine sew you can applique so that's why I design mosaic applique it's not too difficult and it's a lot of fun so I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch me make Derek the deer and let's just see how it turns out okay so looking at all my colors I'm really vibing all of these uh, not this one though. I don't know why. I just really don't like it. I think it's because it's quite, I don't know. I feel like the yellow and orange is just a little bit too stark for what I'm trying to achieve. So the overall end goal for me is something that's quite pastel and dreamy and it's got a mix of warm and cool tones. So I might take that out and I might just start with these. So what I do, when I'm a little bit unsure as well, because it's just a bit of a process, is I think of my end goal, which is I definitely want to have some browns in there. And then I just start by placing the browns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making it now with you. And I'm just going to see how it turns out. So we're on this journey together. So I really want the main thing to be brown. So you got to choose your central part of the design. So I think the focal part of the design is always the eyes. I think the eyes gives it personality. I always try and draw nice big eyes to give it personality. So I'm going to do this one here in brown and that will create a focal point to this part. So when you look at it, you will see the browns. So if I wanted to achieve an overall brown effect, I wouldn't just put like a random brown down here and be like, yep, that's my brown fabric because it's not really where the eyes are going. The eyes for people, not the eyes, the gaze of the design when someone is looking onto it are uh, going to be in this area here. So this is my focal point. So basically whenever you're making anything and you're choosing colors, think what is your focal point and put your main color there. So that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna work around it. So let's get into it. Okay, 
so I'm starting with my main color and I'm putting it on in all the focal points. So my main color, like I said before, was brown. And the focal points are where the viewer who is viewing the work's eyes go to. So they're going to head to this part, which is the face, and then you need to balance it out. So I'm going to have the brown, I think here. I'm going to do brown on the ears because they're very um, dominant features. I might do the brown here just to balance that. So it's like you've got sides, you've got the middle, remember our breaking it up into four. So you've got the sides, you've got the middle, and then we're gonna do here and the mouth. And I think that means the brown is featured in all four quadrants, giving it harmony. So let's just see how it looks. I'm just ad-libbing this. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So hopefully it turns out nicely. Oh, there's mum's hand there giving me, giving me some help. Okay, so I'm planning out the colors that I want to use next. So, I think I definitely want to pull some of this red in because it will balance out the design and also make the um, brown not so stark against all the other bright colors. So if you're using a color that's a bit, or a fabric that's a bit random and doesn't really fit, the best thing you can do is have a filler color that matches all the other colors you want to put in, but also carry some essence, I guess, of the fab the main fabric over. So I think for me, that's the red. I think these this goes really well together. It's quite complimentary. So I'm going to put the red on the outer features. I think that would look the best. So I'm feeling like here, because that balances here, here, here. Again, so it's sort of featured in almost all four quadrants. So you've got like your bottoms and then the top and then here is a little bit lower but it should balance out because it's the same sort of other side like it's reflecting there so i'm going to try and put some red there and then i was thinking i really want to pull in this like really nice purpley orangey color um or pinky orangey color i really like it i like how it's a bit pastel because right now if with just the brown and the red it's quite heavy so if I pop this in, it will lighten up the whole design and also make it a bit more fun and a bit abstract. So these are the reds. And also don't stress because sometimes when I'm um, cutting and tracing, I don't cut perfectly on the line and things are just a little bit bigger and don't fit. So you just come in and trim it. It's just meant to be fun and relaxing, not a stressful design. So put that there. There we go, so I think that's coming together. It looks quite, it's got a bit of harmony and balance there. So I'm gonna add this pink now. So with this piece, you can always, before you um, fuse it on, trace it onto your design placement to know exactly where that sort of ear bit, inner ear bit goes. Or you can just do it by eye, which I generally do. This is looking good. So with that pink, I've got it on either side. So it's on the sides, which gives it harmony, and then in the center. So sometimes if you can't get all things into quadrants, you can just do the top two in the middle or the top, bottom, and the middle. This is my favorite color fabric. I was very excited to use it. Okay, so we've got all these pieces on, and I think I'm pretty happy with them. I like how they're turning out. So I think you can kind of see a bit more what I was saying with your focal color, which is the brown. So I've done that in all four quadrants. And then you just add your other colors on. So my rule is all four quadrants for your focal color. And then if you can't fit your next color in all four, you just do three. So three is always really balancing. So either this one here, it's in the bottom two quadrants and then one in the middle. And it just looks very, I guess it gives it unity. What? <laughs> Balanced. Thanks, Mum. Okay, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here. I wanted to bring in some blues, but I feel like that just looks a bit random and doesn't really fit. And then I was thinking maybe this pink could look good because it has the blues in it, but it's still the base color of this is pink and it matches that. And also because it's more of a ready pink, it doesn't make it look too girly, but sorry, my favorite color is pink and I can't not make things look girly. And then maybe this purple could look really good because it actually fits in with that. They look like they came from, again, the same sort of paint and it was just added maybe a bit of red to make it that color. So that could look nice, but when you don't know, come back to it. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the antlers. Um, I do want to have a contrast. I love putting contrasting colors in my design. I think that it just gives it even more depth and something to look at. So I'm going to add this color here because it's contrasting to all of these. And this is my favorite color in the design. So another trick is if you have a favorite color, try and pick something out that really complements it so it just pops. So when you put that down, it really makes this one pop. Well, that's what I think anyway. And also it has these little bits of color in there and it also has this purple if I decide I want to put that there later. And if I decide I want to put this one there later, it has that. So always have a contingency plan as well. Don't ever just start with like five, just have 10 colors that look really good in a color run and just see where it goes. So I'm gonna put that there and I think for this one, I really wanna bring in some stronger blues because the rest of the series has some stronger colors in it. So this is just like a random scrap fabric that I had laying around. I could put that in there because it has those greens. Um, or I also had this one that was very different, but I don't know if that matches very well, but it sort of really complements that red. So I don't know, I'm just gonna see where it goes. Let's... Hey, look who just dropped into the studio for Hello. a bit of a visit. It's Archie. Archie. Hey, Archie. Hello. Hello. Bye-bye. <laughs> so I thought I'd also just show you um, all my scrap bits of fusible webbing. So I like to use steamer seam and I always just keep these little bags full of like the tiniest little scraps that, you know, maybe you would chuck out, but you never know where you might need a piece like that, you know? So I think it's really good. That's why I also like to do the mosaic style because it's just like, stops waste and you, this stuff's expensive as well and you don't really want to chuck stuff out. So this is my little stash. I even save little pieces like this, cause like, look at that, fits on there nicely. So I always as well, something I forgot to mention, when I'm doing my appliques, every single color needs to have a purpose of um, bringing the design together. So the reason why I put the red here is because it really outlines the neck and it outlines the brow. And so it shows that, you know, I drew it so it was very upward, so it didn't look angry because sometimes I do make things look angry, sorry. So I put my very dominant colors on the outside to frame because you want to frame things, especially with mosaic, it needs to have a sort of frame. Um, and so that's why I kind of chose this because I really wanted that to be a bit of a standout. And then my softer colors I put in as the features of the cheeks because like I think um, whenever I'm designing, I think of someone's face. So, and their cheeks would be nice and rosy. And then my main color, I always put in the focal points again. So. When I'm doing this, sometimes it looks really good against a um, structural piece of like the neck to put a contrasting color because it, it amplifies that even more and it makes the design pop on the linen background. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think this one is the winner. So again, this one's in the top two quadrants and kind of in the bottom quadrants as well. So it um, gives it that balance that I was hoping to achieve. And then this one here is a random color. I haven't repeated it anywhere else, same with this one. But that's okay because I wanted with the antlers to have a bit of like a pop, a bit of a random effect to make it seem like it's a bit rainbow, but it's not. So now onto the eyes. And here is Derek the Deer on the design wall with our new raccoon and our new chipmunk. Looking very cute. So here's the collection so far. You can see that some of the colors I did didn't really tie in with part one. So that's part one. But I'm hoping when I do another three, it will tie in and part two will look really good as well. So I'm gonna hand him over to mum to stitch. So I hope you had fun making Derek the Deer with me today and that you enjoyed seeing how I do my colors and the process that I use. Um, if I could give you some of my tips at the end, I guess it would be to always start with your end goal. So think like, what is the main color I want to bring out? And then the next thing would be to do a color run of about 10 to 12 fabrics and start with your favorite fabric and then try and link it through. 
And then the next bit would be to choose your focal color, which is featured in all four quadrants. So that's just like dividing the, um, the block into four and then making sure it has balance. And then my rule of make sure that you use your strong colors for the structural bits like the neck and the outer colors, and then use a really nice, your favorite color, and then something that complements that favorite color. So my favorite color was that pinky, and I made sure that everything I did complemented that so it blended well together. And then that's how you get the balance, is making sure everything's in all four quadrants, and then you get the harmony from everything looking aesthetically pleasing, from choosing a color run, where everything has linking pieces. And that's why I love using Batiks, is because that they're so natural and raw and hand-dyed and hand-stamped, and they've got all these beautiful colors and textures in them. And I just think it's so pretty to be able to bring out somebody else's artwork with the fabric and put it into a cute little textile art. So I hope you enjoyed watching that today, and we'll see you next time. Bye.